Thank you, Senator Alexander, and, and thank you for having these uh, witnesses in. I think this is a, um, these are very important reports that, that you've made, and the Augustine report, I guess, was done first, but I think they really help our national laboratories focus on, on what's important. I wanted to um, focus again on some of the questions that were um, asked about LDRD. Uh, you know, while most people know the history of nuclear weapons work at these labs, many don't realize this work is supported by research into basic science. Uh, professionals at the labs have made substantial progress to solve some of the world's most vexing problems. Uh, fortunately, lab directors have been able to leverage cooperative research and development agreements, laboratory directed research and development, LDRD, and other methods to spearhead projects that may be outside the normal weapons or national security research, uh, by which directly support scientific progress and retention of top researchers. As this report concluded, um, many laboratories also depend on LDRD to support the recruitment and retention of qualified staff. It is no secret that the LDRD program has been under attack in some quarters. The commission recommended the unburdened cap of 6% and noted this would be, this would primarily impact the NSA, NNSA labs. Why is this important for recruitment and retention and how in your opinion does the LDRD program benefit the overall mission of the NNSA labs and what unique achievements, in your opinion, are directly related to LD, the LDRD program? Uh, I'll take that one, Senator. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, it's a very important topic, and uh, we agree with your characterization of it. Uh, LDRD is especially important for the weapons labs, for the reasons you said. Uh, they depend very much on basic science, and it's the LDRD funding that allows them to explore new areas. It's especially important for the weapons labs in their recruitment and, uh, and retention of uh, leading scientists. As you know well, Senator, um, we don't teach weapons science in universities. Um, there is only three places where weapons science is uh, developed and taught, and that's at the three weapons labs. So they, uh, as it must be. Um, it's, it's very important, therefore, that these laboratories have a way to bring in, um, on board, if you will, uh, PhD level scientists who come without that kind of uh, weapons background. The LDRD funding is uh, often the way they do this. Um, they're very dependent on postdoctoral um, uh, uh, workers. Uh, I've forgotten the percentages, they're in our, our report, but it's uh, well over half of their postdocs come in with this kind of funding and well over half of those postdocs are retained as new PhD scientists for the laboratories. Uh, without that funding, I don't think they could sustain the workforce that they must have. Um, and the reductions, or the effective reduction because of the burdening and then the lowering of the cap, uh, has had an impact on those three laboratories and their ability in the numbers and their ability to uh, recruit and retain these uh, scientists. So it's very important. One of the things that I've noticed that happens is, is many times, with even at the national security labs, the NNSA labs, if, uh, if they diversify some into other areas, which they have, non-weapons work, they're able, with these postdocs, to be able to attract them to the laboratory and have them work in both areas, both weapons and non-weapons, and it provides, a, a, I think, a very fertile ground uh, for basic scientific research. I think you were going to comment on that, Mr. Cawthay. Yes, I agree with that, and I think that one of the challenges for uh, the recruiting of really strong people into these weapons labs is that weapons research isn't as attractive an area for a lot of people. Right. And so having the fastest supercomputers in the country at these labs, having other areas of basic science and uh, exploration available to them is really helpful. And the, one of the interesting things, in addition to how many of the postdocs are supported by LDRD, is the percentage of them that decide to stay at the labs. And it's around 70%, something like that, of those who come. But they aren't sure when they first sign up uh, whether they're going to or not. And having this richer set of work to do is a very important element of that. 
There's also uh, a practical consideration that we haven't mentioned, which is that um, these scientists must receive clearances, of course, before they can uh, do their weapons work. Um, this often takes many months, uh, uh, a year, and uh, being able to support them with uh, LDRD funds um, on this more basic research until they get that clearance is uh, also important for these laboratories. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.